Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking fish tank, specifically the 250 gallon double sided tank that's in the wall just behind me. I'm gonna take you through this whole project, the do's, the don'ts, what we like, things maybe that we could have done differently and I want you along for the ride as this tank fills out, grows out. I want your suggestions. Subscribe and follow the channel and drop a comment below. Let me know what fish you wanna see in there, what coral you wanna see in there. Let's do this together, all right? First, let's jump right in. What you're looking at right now is a video of what this room looked like just four months ago when I moved into this new place. I knew I was gonna redo it. I knew I always wanted an in-wall fish tank. As you can see in this diagram, this room is 35 by 25. It was really big and kind of unnecessary. I decided that I was gonna put an office into this room and split it up and make the living room have a separate area for music, a separate area for recording, and it just made a lot of sense. One of the concerns was blocking the window and losing a lot of the light. So one of the thoughts was, well, hey, I've always wanted an in-wall fish tank. Why don't I put one in, make it nice and wide so the light can still come into the office and then fill back in to the living room. So that's where the genesis of this idea came from. A lot of the sizing decisions that we made were extremely arbitrary. I knew I was gonna have to get a custom tank made because of the overflow, which I'll get to in a second. So we just sort of looked at some parameters. We didn't wanna go much deeper than 24 inches because you don't really gain any viewing angle, so there was just no need to go deeper than that. And we didn't wanna go any taller than 30 inches because if we did, we would have had to increase the size of the glass, which would have been more cost and a lot more weight. So 24 deep, 30 tall, we knew. And then I kind of just picked the size 80 inches. I knew about how big the wall would be. I knew I wanted cabinets on both sides in the office. So that's where we landed. And I sat with a volume calculator and realized that was gonna be 250 gallons. That seemed like a lot, so that's what we went with. It was pretty arbitrary in terms of those decisions. The next big thing we had to deal with was the overflow. We couldn't have an overflow on the back of the tank, which would be where you'd have a traditional overflow, and that's because we had to be able to see through from both sides, obviously, so we put it on the side. One of the cool things we did with the construction is that we covered it so you don't see it. So when you look at the tank, you just see display. Of course, when you access the tank from the top, you can still see into the overflow if you ever need to get in there, and of course, you can get to the hoses, which are on the bottom from underneath the tank, and you'll see all of that later in the video. Now, I wasn't sure if I was ever gonna make this video, so I don't have pictures of every step of the way, but I can basically walk you through the construction. When we built the wall, obviously the wall had to be two feet deep where the tank is to accommodate the tank and the closets. And the other wall, the side wall, is just a traditional wall, nothing special about the construction of that. Once we built a two foot wall, we knew we needed to brace the tank. Now, if you're gonna be putting in a fish tank that's this large, make sure that your floor can support it. For me, I was very lucky. I'm on the first floor of the house. There is no basement, and the first floor of the house is on a concrete slab, so we knew that supporting the weight of the tank was not gonna be an issue. I could have built the tank as big as I wanted on the concrete slab, and we would have been totally fine. We used two by sixes, constructed a base for the tank that would give us access to the bottom. Ultimately, we ended up putting these access panels on the side of the tank. Probably would have wanted to do more cabinets, um, but between my contractor and the fish tank guys over at Total Aquariums. Shout out Martin and Rodney and Will and all the guys that come take care of the tank. I love you guys. Uh, we, didn't, we weren't really in sync from the beginning, so uh, this is kind of where we landed in terms of the cabinet placement. Here's one of the don'ts of the tank. We knew there was gonna be an overflow, but we didn't really account for covering it when we did the measurements. So as you can see on the left side of the tank where that six inch overflow is, the molding is much closer to the cabinet than on the right side. Now. I pointed it out, I'm sure you could see it. Nobody has come in here and looked at the tank and noticed it, not one person. So it's something I have to live with. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but I wish I can go back in time a little bit and kind of just remeasure that tank. If you're gonna be getting a tank this big, one thing you definitely have to be concerned with is water changes and where you're getting your RO water. It is not practical to have to go to the fish store and bring five gallon buckets of salt water back here. I knew I'd have to make my own. I knew I'd need RO water. I got this 100 gallon per day RO unit. I didn't want to have to worry about running water in and where the drain was going to go. So what I did is I put this right over the washing machine, which is about 25 feet away from where the tank is. And as you can see, we split the supply line. So that's just a regular garden hose fitting. You can get it at Home Depot for about 10 bucks. That fitting goes into the washer and the yellow uh, hose right there is what supplies the RO unit with the water. So it's just run up behind that cabinet and goes in there and then the red line is the drain, and that goes right down the washing machine's drain line. It's super easy. So the water in, water out took about five minutes. 
Then you have the blue line that takes the RO water and sends it over to the fish tank. So we ran that up here, put a hole in the ceiling and just ran it straight across the span into the fish tank, down here, past the lights and boom, there it is. And I'll show you once we get inside the tank how that split. Welcome into the office. It's the room that is right behind me. Did a little walking tour for you here. Now, we talked earlier about those RO lines and storing the water for water changes. So on each side of the room, there is a cabinet Inside that cabinet, pop open the door, and there is a 50 gallon bucket with a float switch. So we don't have to worry about turning the RO water on and off. It's a mechanical float switch, it stops the water. The white braces that you see, the wood, that you'll see there's two on this side and two on this side. That was just to deal with the expansion of the tanks. As they're filling up the water, they were kind of protruding and the doors couldn't close. So we put those in there and they control those bins and they stay just in place. Now, we did not measure these cabinets beforehand. We had to literally cut the lips off of these things and we got super lucky. The float switches fit and those bins just fit right in there perfectly to give us 100 gallons of water. So when the main blue line comes in, it's split. It goes to the can on the left. It goes to the can on the right. And that's our 100 gallons of water. Next, we'll go underneath the tank. This is the sump. This is where all the magic happens. It's an eShop sump. It is about 60 gallons, I believe. Uh, what you can see on the left there, there's two bags for filtration media. Right now, we have carbon and phosphan in there. We have a UV filter on the bottom. That's that black unit down there. We have our dosing pump underneath the tank here. It is a three channel dosing pump. Uh, we use ESV part one, ESV part two. Over here, you can see the lines that go into the overflow that we talked about earlier. There are two drain lines and one single return that splits into two and goes into the two heads. And that comes from the pump that sits right next to the protein skimmer. The automatic top off is one of the cooler parts of the tank. As you can see, we squeezed a tank in there. Honestly, I'm not even 100% sure if it's 10 gallons or 20 gallons, but this also fills up with RO water and has a float switch. Down here on the bottom, you'll see that hose that comes in from that tank. And down here we have the ice cap water sensor. What this water sensor does is it senses when there's water has evaporated out of the tank and then it sends a signal to the pump inside the fresh RO water that then fills the sump and gets the water back up. So we never have to worry about levels getting too low in the display tank. That automatic top off takes care of everything and it all runs off of that one switch, that ice cap switch. Next thing we'll look at is the top of the tank. That's where our lights are. We have three Radeon G5s. Uh, unfortunately, the G6 came out after I had ordered the lights for these. I ordered them a few months before we actually built the tank. You can see the ice cap controller up there. I mean, these lights are just incredible. Uh, if you don't know about them, look them up online, Radeon G5s. We didn't finish the top. We really only accessed it for feeding, so there was kind of uh, no need. It's just the stud construction and um, we put those hinges on the doors so that they would stay up while we do maintenance. You can see on the right there, we have an automatic feeder. So pellet food is automatically fed into the tank every day. So the fish are getting some pellet food. And the only thing I need to do is feed three times a week uh, a nice little concoction of frozen food and reefroids to get those corals to grow nice and big. Another thing you see on here are the black seals. Honestly, that was done primarily for noise reduction. I wanted this room to be as quiet as possible. Uh, you could hear the recording. I mean, this is a pretty good microphone, but the tank is fully running behind me. I haven't shut anything down to do this recording, and it's pretty quiet in here. Uh, we originally drilled that hole in the ceiling so we can get out the blue tubing, which is what feeds the RO water. Um, and that hole was just done for construction, but we left the holes because obviously the lights give off heat and there could of course be some humidity in the top of the tank. And to deal with that, we just left the holes in the ceiling, figured we'd see how it goes and it goes pretty well. All right guys, so I wanted to build a 250 gallon tank and I wanted it to be super easy to maintain. Literally all I have to do on a day to day is just feed frozen food three times a week. And of course, we do have to do regular maintenance, changing out the carbon and the phosphan, those sorts of things, and that's every couple weeks. Those were the major concerns of the tank. Right now, the tank is young. You can see a lot of the coral pieces are small, but they're gonna grow in 
really nice. They're doing really well so far. And I'm excited to watch this tank grow and have you guys along for the ride. Right now we only have a couple fish, two clowns, a sand sifting goby, a fire goby, a file fish, and an orange shoulder tang. Let me know what you want to see in there. I've been thinking about putting an eel in there. Not sure how it's going to work with the shrimp and some of the other inverts, uh, but we want to get some cool fish. So let me know in the comments what you think. Again, like and subscribe so you can be notified whenever new videos come in. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And please, let me know if you have any questions. Shoot them over to my inbox. I'll see you soon.